I'm like primarily been a restaurant owner for 23 years and I think I was successful in the sense that I never had to raise capital to open and I found spaces that were, um, you know, underutilized. And that's kind of my theme is that I'm kind of the anti-funding, you know, into finding underutilized spaces talk. And um, my vision now has changed. There's a group called the Robert Sterling Clark Foundation. Um, I'm actually one of the fellows, the Sterling Network Fellows. It's kind of fancy. But I've got to interact the last six months with a lot of uh, New York City employees, including higher ups at New York City uh, Public Housing Authority. Um, for a long time, I thought about, I've always thought, I'm, I'm from New England, I was brought up to be frugal. The idea of underutilized resources is important. And I feel like a lightweight hearing what Gary said. I don't have like a plan or a project, but it always came up back in the 90s. Who remembers the Clinton's universal health care plan? I do. And the way I thought right away was, wow, why can't they roll this out? There's so many unused rooms in public buildings in America, whether it's a school or a library, you could have a clinic in every town in America with a retired doctor and some kids working off their student loans. That's how I always think and I love those programs. And for some reason, for the last few years, whenever I go to uh, slow, slow money pitches, I walk away disgusted because it's someone with from an, got a new MBA and they've got, oh, the latest vegan coconut snack that they're trying to get funding for and they've never made it. And, and they're not creating jobs. And so, so many times I look around and being involved in nonprofits and being involved in the community, I'm like, no one ever talks about, even the restaurants, restaurant investing is the most disgusting. It's like, you know you're gonna put money in, you know you're gonna lose money, you know it's gonna go out of business. Why isn't anyone saying, gosh, in that community you could have a place where people learn how to cook, but also they cook and they make soup and they make teas and they make food and there's jobs. You know, why aren't we talking about that that is an important resource? And it kind of goes into what, how you guys introduce it today that some things need to take more time. And it's one reason I've never, I've never had investors and I've never raised money because I have felt like their models did not work in a way that I could work. So I've always tried to find underutilized spaces. So fast forward now the way I'm thinking, building on you know, Clinton's universal healthcare that never happened, um, you know, just being aware of resources in the city, you know, being at, around a, a public housing parking lot on the weekends, it doesn't get used because the employees aren't there. There's so many underused resources in New York City in particular, such a rich place that I feel like along the lines of, of, of how Wenjay speaks as well, I'm like, there's so many potential partners and ways to, to grow jobs and businesses and, and wealth. And I'm seeing that a little bit. People talk about, oh, I know in Brownsville, there's a community kitchen that's happening out of public housing. And there's some developers like L&M developers, anyone know them? Uh, they, they have put in some public programming. I think most people usually stop at community gardens. But the potential to work with public spaces, and this is a policy thing, I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone, but I really feel like the conversation has to happen. And um, that's really all I have to say is that, guys, there's so much potential out there. I feel like in this community, we waste so much time pitching for money, and I think it's bullshit. And I feel like there's so many ways to start a business, there's so many ways to partner and, and make our community stronger. And uh, a lot of you inv investor types, I'm like, you guys really have to get out there on the streets and uh, find something that really is a startup. You know, oh, the homemaker who's making a hot sauce needs to get, a lot of programs do this. But again, it's always through programs. Why does it have to be through a program? Why does it always have to be a middle person? And, you know, and there are community-based programs. In East New York, there's an arts program. There's programs that really are based in the community that no one goes to. So everyone's trying to start something here today. Oh, we're gonna be that intermediary to help people start businesses. Well, that's great, but you're not in touch with anyone that's gonna start a business. And you know, those are my thoughts. And I'd be happy to talk more about it, but it's my life journey now. Cause I'm, I actually look it up, Robert Sterling Clark Foundation. Uh, most of the people in the fellowship are city employees. There's some nonprofits, but I'm, I'm, I am disgusted by what I've learned the number of foundations in New York City that are family funded, what they do with their money. It's a joke. It's a big joke, guys. And we still have over half the children in our public schools are really poor. 10% of the children in our public schools are homeless. There's a lot of serious issues that no one really addresses. And a lot of it's just this kind of day to day work. And um, I, I really think that we just need to step back and, and talk more about shit.